Hi, thanks for watching Aquarium Tech today. Uh, today I just wanted to do a small video on my freshwater sump that I have. Uh, it's basically what I use to do my water changes. I've mentioned it briefly before in other videos. Uh, a lot of people have been wondering about it. And, you know, I probably will do a separate video, you know, like my part four water change. Uh, you know, uh, on how to do it with this sump, you know, it'll be pretty self-explanatory once you see it, but um, This sump that I have, you know, it's basically my budget sump that I'm using, you know I really tried not to buy too many things and the things I did buy I kept the cost low because it's it's just a, it's, it's just a sump So, you know, I'm not really looking to go all out on it. This is my budget sump and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, show you what I got in there Alright, so what I got here is my budget sump, alright? Now, there's a few things I kind of thought about and incorporated when I wanted it. Obviously, uh, well not obviously, but I live in Florida, so one of the biggest things I thought about was since I, I do have it outside right now, it, it, it is being stored outside, is that I need to have a lot of circulation so it doesn't mold up or become stagnant or anything like that. Um, and obviously, you know, if I treat my water in here with something, it needs a lot of... Uh, uh, circulation to get that all mixed in well and good and uh, thirdly you know to get contaminants out of the water that are in there now obviously I'm probably not going to need much mechanical filtration in here or biological it's all going to be pretty much chemical filtration I mean there there will be a small amount of mechanical involved but not really biological I'm not really looking for that obviously there's no life forms that should be in here so um, so obviously the best things I, I thought to do that task is one, carbon or, or, or some kind of chemical media, which I actually do not have yet, alright? Uh, but I had, you know, this has kind of been long running that I have, that people have been asking about it, so I wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way, but basically that's the only missing component I have right now because I did have something but it broke and, you know, it was actually something I had just lying around the house. Obviously, like I said, this is my budget, so you know I'm not really gonna waste money into just something that holds my water. So, but anyways, so that's the component I'm missing. You know, all you would need is something, you know, basically just a power head and some kind of media basket is really all you need. Uh, I, I do plan on getting a new one. You know, I'll probably mention it. You know, or, or do an unboxing on it when I get it and just mention it. Uh, to this. But anyways, then the other thing was UV sterilization. And I have plenty of that in here. Oh yeah. Plenty. And then of course mechanical. Like I said, I, I did put a little bit of mechanical filtration in there. So, let's go ahead and bring the camera in and we'll show you. Okay, this is the inside of my sump. And as you can tell, the water is crystal clear. In fact, I can see better through the camera than I can right here with my own eyes because it's actually in a shaded corner and it's kind of dark. So as you can tell, that water is crystal clear, and this is, you know, a couple feet of water, you know, maybe three, four feet, you know, at the most, and you can see right through it, it looks like it's two feet of water. But I'll go ahead and go over what I got in here. Oh, and one thing I want to mention real quick, I'll mention it in, when I do the water change video, uh, obviously being out here, it's going to get hot. So that's something to consider before you do your water changes, you know, maybe try to have some kind of way to let it cool off. First off, this thing I got right here is if you remember recently I did a Maxi Jet on Pro Boxing. Well, I have this in here right now. This is definitely putting out most of the top circulation in here. Obviously, I have it in propeller mode. Then over here, what I got right there, that is the AquaClear 70. And I am using the Quick Filter... Uh, cartridge on there I'll go ahead and bring it up see if you can't see that it's using the quick filter attachment so that will give me my mechanical filtration and of course with every single kind of mechanical filtration there is biological so even though I don't care for it it's in there next over here I have I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing over here is actually that AA UV sterilizer it's that 24 watt one I recently did an unboxing on uh, like I said, I was looking for cheap stuff, and of course, that's definitely a very cheap UV sterilizer right there. So, and it's the I think yeah, 24 or 22 watt version, which is a hell of a lot of power for a UV sterilizer bulb. But like I said, I, I imagine the system's kind of inefficient. Next, I have another UV sterilizer. 
this one right here, I'll actually pull it out because the brackets actually suck on it. But uh, this is the JBJ UV sterilizer I did an unboxing on. And actually, this one's different. The one I did an unboxing on was a 9 watt. This is a 13 watt one. Uh, it does the same amount, same gallons per hour, but uh, you know, it's 13 watts. This one's been working pretty good so far. But uh, yeah, so there's my other UV sterilizer, and it has a little very, very coarse sponge. Obviously, I wouldn't go with anything fine for a UV sterilizer. And then lastly, I have my big pump in there, which is this one right here. Now, the, this one is actually a pond pump, all right? Here, I have the label on it right here. It's actually a pond pump. Uh, I basically replaced my pond pump a few years ago. This one wasn't putting out enough for my pond, enough gallons per hour to run my waterfall. So basically, I replaced it. And then when I, you know, had enough tanks to basically need a sump, you know, I kind of forgot that I had it. And uh, one day I was in my garage and I found it and it works great. And I, I actually used that pump to, uh, to, to do my water changes. That's how I pump the water out of here. Because pump pumps have amazing head pressure. They, they can usually deal with a lot of head pressure. And they usually get a lot of gallons per hour. And they're usually pretty cheap compared to, you know, like I guess you would say normal aquarium power head uh, system. So... That's what I got going on in this sump. Uh, I'll probably elaborate more when I do how to do a water change video with it, but it'll be pretty simple. I basically use this in conjunction with the python. You know, I have the python out here hooked up to the hose, and I uh, just use that. So, but as you can tell, uh, it's, it's it's a pretty effective system, and uh, really. Uh, it was a good deal, at least in my case. But you can you can obviously improvise and you know maybe use other things that you have laying around the house. Just to wrap this up real quick, um, you know, and give you a few tips about it. Uh, one thing is never use hang on bag stuff with sumps like that. Maybe if it, you're inside, it's okay. But you know, with that, you have to start cutting out on the top. But you know, you have to start cutting out of the top. You definitely want to have a cover over it. That's for sure. Uh, and I just, I, I, I don't suggest it. So if, if even if you have a hang on back laying around, I don't use it. What you want to use is internal stuff. Internal is always the best to use on that. And plus it always aesthetically and just storage wise is always better. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could go external wise and do some like canister stuff if you wanted to. But I, you know, I really don't see the need to. I'm mean, gonna have a big enough sump to do that. That sump, by the way, I think it's a 45 gallon. I think I forgot. It's either a 45 or a 55 gallon sump. So it, it holds a decent amount of water in there. So when I do my water changes, uh, you know, I can pretty much fill up any tank I need at a time. So. All right. Uh, oh, and another thing. I don't know if you noticed in there, but all the stuff I had, I didn't have it all sitting in one corner or one little area. I spread it out through the entire thing. And not only that, each of them were on different levels. I don't know if you noticed that. Like, you know, I'd have one up, one here, one here, one in the middle, you know. And, you know, kind of alternating around, too. You want to have them all over the place. Obviously, that thing is, you know, probably like four feet tall. Even if I have that super, you know, even if I'm blowing 1,300, yeah, 1,300 gallons per hour up at the top, I mean, the bottom's not going to be getting any, hardly anything. So, uh, I have them staggered throughout the the water column there and also staggered, you know, ground-wise too. So, so that way there's there's not going to be any area that doesn't get flow or circulation. And of course, you know, with the UV sterilizers, I like to have them spread out so that way they can uh, go ahead and try to take in more water. Of course, on mine, they weren't super spread out uh, because I kind of noticed water patterns. Anyways, if, if you are on a budget, you know, maybe try to look for stuff that's on sale. Uh, or maybe look for stuff that's... Uh, you know, like convertible, like for instance, that the the maxi jet I used. You know, that that saved me some money because I could have go, gone out and bought a Hydro or Coriala that put out like the same amount, and I probably would have been paying at least sixty dollars, and I paid like twenty dollars for the maxi jet. 
you know, ba basically improvise is what I really meant to say. You know, s s see if you can't improvise. And like I said, I use a pond pump, an old pond pump, to uh, take the water out. That, that, that's going to be the most important part of your system right there is the pump that pumps it out. So just remember that. And that should probably be the thing that you have that has the most gallons per hour. All right. So I guess that about wraps it up for this video. If there's more questions or anything, I can always make a more detailed video. And of course, I'll go over the stuff when I do uh, maybe the part four water change. That's about it. Thanks for tuning in.